Welcome back to the channel everyone. This is Steve Walker with Soaring Eagle Outdoors and this is a, uh, a review of my 2019 Forerunner and it has now 30,000 miles on it. If you've watched my backpacking gear videos you know that I like to put a lot of a lot of uh, time and mileage on my gear before I do a review and I think it's time to to talk about those uh, those 10 things that I really like about my Forerunner. That's going to be part one, and then part two is the six things that I don't like about my Forerunner. Okay, let's get started. Number one has to be, and these are not in any particular order, but number one has to be reliability. I am not sure if I've ever owned a vehicle that hasn't had some kind of a warranty issue by the 30,000 mile mark. That includes four previous Toyotas, a Volvo, and two Jeeps. Only a Lexus RX. Uh, 400 that my wife owned didn't have any issues by this time. Number two, the KDSS. This stands for the Kinetic Dynamic Stability System. This is to help the vehicle uh, not to nosedive when you hard brake. And with the addition of the three inch lift that I put on and the extra stability that I, that I get from the two and a half inch shocks in front, the nosedive has almost been has almost been totally eliminated, and it's an incredibly how it's incredible how stable the vehicle actually is. This last weekend, and I'll have an upcoming video on it. I took it on uh, probably one of my first longest trails that I've had it on a 28 mile trip on the four mile. <laughs> it's ironic. It's a it's called the four mile trail, but it's actually 28 miles down near Buena Vista here in Colorado and uh, the vehicle really, really did, did well and the, and the KDSS and working with my lift system was, was spectacular. Now, this is an add-on, this is something you have to, to um, buy the vehicle with from, from the factory. You either get it with KDSS or without, so it's one of those things you have to look for to, to have put on. Now, some of the downside of the KDSS, if you want to do a lift more a larger lift than a three inch lift or put tires really bigger than well the, the 285s that I have on now are, are, are 33 equivalents if you wanted to go to a 34 inch tire which would be like a two a 295 you actually have to do a little bit of a a body mount chop the the forerunner itself unless you unless you really do some sort of a long travel kit that's going to run you six seven eight thousand dollars you're not going to be able to put super large tires on the Forerunner, um, unless you do something, and of course the KDSS will have to come off then. So that is one of the downsides of it. All right, number three um, has to be the the slide out cargo deck, and I've done a video on this. You know, yes, no, is it something you should do? You have to put it on the port. Although I've had some subscribers say they've had some dealerships, specifically in Canada, that have offered to try to put them in and install them for them. But I really, really do like the, uh, the, the slide-in cargo deck. I use this feature all the time, especially with heavy loads. And in the end, I am glad that I got it. Okay, number four is the sliding rear window. Now, this is a cool feature. You know you, when you have a pesky fly or mosquito, you just can't get out of the car? Well, just roll down the windows and then the back one and out it goes. But seriously, I rolled down the window, put some padding over the opening, and I can put in lumber or ladders or, and put a flag on them and use, and use the tie downs in the back cargo deck to ensure that they stay in place. And I've been able to, to very easily do 10 foot, 12 foot boards in the back of the Forerunner uh, with that, by putting that window down so you don't have to be driving around with the, the back tailgate open. Number five is the XP package. Now this is a package that comes from uh, Southwest, uh, the Southeast Toyota dealerships, but it basically is the blacked out badging, the TRD wheels, and it came with some Predator steps that I've since replaced with some um, RSG rock sliders. The steps were good. They were great steps, but not workable as a an off-road type platform. They, they hung down too far and would be great anchors and, and rock catchers, so I, I took them off. Number six, the LED undercarriage lighting package. This was an addition that I put on. It's a cool feature, and that's just all it is. It's a cool feature. 
It's not like rock lights. You can't uh, have it illuminated when you're, when you're driving. When the door comes open, they come on. When you unlock it, when the puddle lights come on, they come on. If you're camping and need some extra illumination, you just, you know, you, you, you crack your door open a little bit, you have your dome lights off, that will light up underneath and, and kind of give a, a nice, a nice ambiance. But other than that, it's just, it's just a kind of a cool feature and I do like it and I'm, I'm glad that I put it on. Number seven, MPG. Now, the MPG is not super great, but for what it is, a body on frame truck, it's actually not too bad and it's been getting better. Um, I routinely now average around town 19 and a half to 20. And I just recently took a trip over 500 miles doing 70 to 75 and I got 22.1 miles per gallon. So it's been getting a lot better. I have an MPG video that I did, oh gosh, probably 18 months ago. And you can see uh, I was driving from Florida to Arizona and what the MPG was, and it was actually a lot worse back then. Not only that, I discovered that, you know, out here in the Western States, you can do 80. The Forerunner does, 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 is very thirsty if you're trying to do 80 miles an hour. 70, 75, it does okay. But man, if you try to push it up to 80, you get 14 miles per gallon, okay? Number eight is the LED driving light fog light combo that's in the front of the forerunner this is an option and is a feature that enhances visibility at night and on the trail by following other people uh, i feel it's worth the expense and I'm, I'm glad that i put it on i use it all the time mostly because one of my dislikes has to do with the headlights and that helps to compensate for it number nine horsepower and torque Okay, for the vehicle design and size, this for me is kind of on the margin. Uh, I'm not overly excited, but find that is acceptable. Um, it is light years uh, better than the first Jeeps that I had. Uh, I had a 1984 XJ with a small four-cylinder engine and an automatic, and you'd have to downshift just to go up a slight grade. I wouldn't even call it a grade, I'd call it a, just an incline. Um, uh, but it was very, very underpowered. This is, this is adequately powered and torqued for what it is and, and the size that it is. Number 10, the soft tech seats. Now I'm a leather guy, so I was not sure about this material, uh, but I am sold on it now. It is comfortable, durable, and very easy to clean. The other day I had some takeout leak under the seat, uh, and if it had been the uh, leather, I'd still have a grease spot on there. But when I got to go home, I got a rag and some mild cleaner, and cleaned it right up. Okay, so that is it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Please leave a comment uh, and questions below. And don't forget to watch the six things that I dislike about my Forerunner to be able to get a complete picture. All right, everybody, until next time, bye.